Hi friends, Ben back again on another amazing video. This time the maintenance kit, all that I use on a regular periodic basis is all that I have with me here. And uh, th this is all that you need too. So remember to go and look for these things. Um, of course, I will also try and look for uh, all of these online and will attach links. But if uh, I am not uh, able to get the right product and, you know, put, a, put up a link on the description or in the description, uh, please do go to the nearest motorcycle spare parts, you know, uh, automotive spare parts shop and uh, buy yourselves uh, all of these things because this is all you need to not visit the service center again and again and again. <laughs> the number one thing that you need to keep in mind is proactive uh, maintenance. It's not active maintenance. It's not, um, uh, you know, passive maintenance. It is proactive maintenance. Maintenance is key. Maintenance is number one. Um, so yes, I will just run you through all the products that I have. I will also try and mention the links of all these products in the description for you guys to go check out and buy. And yeah, we'll start with uh, my fork oil. This is a very simple mineral based fork oil. Of course, it doesn't last as long as the synthetic base, but this comes pretty cheap. I, I believe this is about, uh, how much is it? 150 bucks, 145 it says. Now it would definitely be 150 or 155, who knows. So this is model 20W. For any of, uh, for all the fellows who love doing off-road riding, for all the fellows who want to push the Himalayan, for all the fellows who want to just, you know, go attacking with the Himalayan. 20W fork oil. I have you know, put it in my motorcycle thrice. I have tested the other weights as well. Nothing like the 20W. The only thing with mineral base is, um, you know, it kind of loses its viscosity after a lot of riding. It becomes a, a little watery, a little too soon compared to the synthetic oil. So, uh, yes, fork oil, mortal 20W. What grease do I use? I use Timken. Uh, premium automotive grease, 75,000 kilometer um, guarantee, huh? life, uh, but then again, I do not know if I'll be, I'll ever be able to test that out, but then that being said, this is a lithium complex grease. One thing about this grease, which I have experienced is if I were to apply a coat and if I were to shove it in, uh, whatever component it is, and if I were to pull it out, 2000 so 2000 4000 8000 kilometers later it still is that very same red coat that was applied maybe just a bit just a, maybe 10 percent of losses that's about it the rest of it remains intact so really really nice grease this is what you need to get if you really want to go premium really good grease i'm not doing any of this to canvas or to promote any of these products i mean i uh, none of not a single product here or for that matter the last 20 plus years of me maintaining my motorcycles none of these products that i've used have been sponsored by even a single soul <laughs> so it's all my money my hard-earned uh, money and uh, truckloads of research on what works at what what doesn't moving on to what do i have here this is my k n air filter sealing grease this is to seal the uh, cap or um, you know the, the the last cap to the mouth of the air filter box just so that there is no air leak there this is a fantastic product i don't know if i'll be able to find a link for this but even if um, i don't do try all the uh, performance uh, parts outlets shops they might have a stock of this so air filter sealing grease i use this regularly every single time i clean my air filter i use this then I have some rubber solution. This is to, uh, you know, for the tires or for the tubes when they get punctured. This is for the caps that we use to, um, you know, cover the, the hole with. This is to um, stick the cap to the tube. This is an interesting thing. This is called, uh, uh, this is what we call as Anabond. Works for all sorts of plastic. Anything that is broken plastic, you can fix it with this. Uh, two of them, uh, mix them together, apply one coat, hold the uh, the two components that are broken together or tape them or zip tie them and let it sit for about 12 to 24 hours and you have a solid bond. It will never break again. It might be even more stronger than how it was from the factory. So a quick, quick, uh, this is Fevlite, by the way, from Fevicol, I believe. But uh, this is what we call Anabond. And moving on to... Uh, some uh, battery grease or dielectric grease, whatever it is that you want to call it. Uh, both uh, the same, I would say. This is Liquimoly. Uh, 
I have it in my syringe. Use it on all my connectors. Um, works pretty well. Use it regularly on my battery terminals and uh, all my connectors. Open them up, shove this in. Uh, I mean, squeeze this in and then shove it back in place and all's well. What makes everything, every connector waterproof. Moving on to WD-40. I have an assort assortment of WD-40s. I have this fella here. A little tiny can that I can carry in my uh, top box or uh, sorry, my uh, tank bag. Uh, of course, I can also carry this fellow in my tank bag. And this is for regular maintenance days, you know, uh, chain clean and all that stuff. This is all that I use to clean my chain with. I do not have a specific chain cleaner. This uh, this cleans the uh, this cleans three quarters of my motorcycle. So this is a fantastic degreaser and a rust remover and uh, in general a cleaning agent which i use regularly i've been using these fellows for 20 years so kindly do not come up with um, um you know um, uh, your your opinions on your opinions on wd-40 uh, being harmful to the chain and all that uh, it is just false well if you could just look at how many wd-40s i have with me well that should say uh, enough about how important this is to the maintenance kit so this is a more, uh, more like a dedicated product with a nozzle that sprays directly into uh, these nice and tight areas. So something like that. Is is there any difference between the two of them? No, they're, they're, they're the same. There are different kinds of WD, WD-40s, um, specific, uh, you know, purpose made or specific to uh, their purpose. But these are generic ones. These are general ones. You can use them just all over the bike and you needn't be worried about anything. Another important, very important, uh, extremely important um, uh, solvent that I have with me is Liquid Molly Injection Cleaner. This thing, this thing works wonders for all you fellas. Click on the link today and buy this is because this is all that you need to not remove your throttle body or your carburetors and clean them every once in a while. All you need to do is pour this into your motorcycle tank and the cleaning process is done for you. The injector sprays well. Uh, the internals of your throttle body or your carburetor is clean. Use it regularly and you will never have the need to dismantle any of those components. This alone will do the job for you. Cleans the fuel system and to some extent also cleans the top of the valve. If you could just have a look at this picture. Of course, it will also try and clean the top of the valve. Uh, but then again, I'm not so sure about the top of the valve. I can only say that my injector has never developed any hiccups. I have not had stalling issues. I've not had um, hiccups only because I use this on a regular basis. And no matter where I fill fuel from, of course, I would recommend to fill fuel from a good uh, pump. Um, if, if I were to just give you a suggestion, uh, in India, Shell uh, petrol stations have fantastic fuel. So just filling up from shell will take care of it they have detergents in the fuel they'll take care of it but if you do not get if you don't have access to shell petrol stations then fill it up from wherever the hell that you want to but just see to it that you use this on a regular basis now how often should you do should you use it um, every 2000 kilometers every 1500 to 2000 kilometers just pour 40 milliliters or 50 milliliters of this into a full tank of fuel and use it for 1500 to 2000 kilometers until um, I mean, yeah, uh, and then you can do another uh, round and and keep doing it just just so that you don't have to remove your throttle body and clean your injectors or anything for that matter. Moving on to chain lube, I have roll on chain lube with me. I have Vista chain lube with me. I have uh, this fellow. My friend just gave this to me. It's a chain paste model. It's not a chain lube. I am no big fan of chain lubes is because I run an RK Takasago chain. That chain is still the way it is uh, when it came out of the factory or when I installed it onto my motorcycle. It has absolutely not had any rusting issues, no links getting uh, jammed or nothing. Very, very, very high quality chain. So I'm, uh, then again, I'm not a big believer of chain loops is because the, the modern chains, O-ring chains, X-ring chains, all of them are sealed chains. They have grease within them. Now, uh, cleaning is very important. Cleaning the chain is very important, not lubing. If you, if you really want to lube your chains, you should only be lubing to maybe arrest the sound, the noise that the chain makes. 
So if you were to ask me, how often should you lube? If you are on a long ride, let's just say 200 kilometers and more, then and only then you should be bothered about lubing your chain. But if you do these short, uh, quick rides, weekend rides, or uh, if you do off-road riding, you know, very frequently, there's absolutely no need for you to lube your chain. Lubing your chain is counterproductive. It will gather all the dirt, the muck, the sand, everything will stick to it. It will spoil the uh, chain and the sprockets even before you know it. So... For fellows who do off-road riding, clean your chain with WD-40, get rid of the excess, uh, whatever it is that uh, the residue with a nice cloth. Let your chain be semi-dry. That's all that you need. Uh, for the fellows who do long highway rides, then for you to have a smooth running chain, a chain that is not bare metal to bare metal, that is the chain being dry and the sprockets being dry, they'll make a lot of noise. And just for that purpose, you could use chain lubes chain lubes will also see to it that your chain runs a little cooler is because it's of course a lubricant and it will somehow um, uh, help in uh, you know uh, reducing the overall heat of those components so that way also you will not have the metals expanding and creating a lot of noise so yeah long highway runs you might need chain lube and for that matter any chain lube is okay uh, mortal makes fantastic chain lubes and this product i have seen my friend use so um, yes uh, just got it and is, I'm going to try it. This product alone, I'm not uh, sharing my opinion yet, but I just got it and I know Mortal makes fantastic products. So yeah, uh, Mortal chain paste, not a lube, a chain paste. Avro motor flush. I have used this twice on my motorcycle. Once when once at 22,000 kilometers and then later at 25,000 kilometers and that was it. I have not used uh, a motorcycle flush uh, after that is because there was no need for it. Uh, the internals of the engine is clean or I believe it is clean and uh, have kept it at that. But yes, you can use flush maybe once every 25,000 kilometers or so. Um, just so that you know you have one cleaning session uh, of the internals of the engine yeah moving on to another amazing product uh abro silicone spray liquid moly silicone spray i have spoken about them i've made detailed videos on them these things work wonders my engine still with one wash looks like how it was from the factory is because of these fellas i apply them regularly um and it, they, they kind of put this puts a protective coating on top of my uh, engine paint or any matte painted surface this kind of makes it look like how it was from uh, when it came out of the factory so yep liquid moly brake fluid dot four again mineral based not synthetic but uh, yes definitely has made an improvement in braking do use this and you will see a difference in your braking slight improvement if you are a very keen uh, uh, rider somebody who is very observant and who understands the difference between uh, products and this is k and n air filter oil this is what i use to oil my air filter and i also have k and n um, um, cleaning um, uh, agent with which i clean my air filter Earth brake cleaner so this is another product that i use periodically i would say every 500 kilometers or so one nice coat of this from the outside takes care of the calipers, takes care of the pistons, takes care of the brake pads, all of it. Imagine how easy it is nowadays. You don't have to. There was a time when I used to dismantle the calipers. I used to pull the pistons out. I used to clean everything individually. I used to put them back together. My God, all that work, all that labor. It's a solid two to three hour job. And now with just this regular usage of this let me tell let me make one thing very clear all of this is maybe you know they just they just keep getting um, uh, replenished they they keep the i mean none of this is what you would have seen in my previous video everything is a new stock a uh, <laughs> new can so you will be shelling out truckloads of money on maintenance but of course it will keep your motorcycle intact you will not have to visit the service center with complaints and that is what is key uh, so this does is not this is no cheap affair maintaining your motorcycle with all these solvents but they will see to it that your know, motorcycle is in good shape and good health so yep brake cleaners work wonders spray from the outside i've made dedicated videos on all these products for you to see i will attach the links of all those videos as well so that you can go into those videos and check these products out going on to choke and carb cleaner this i use from the outside i remove again 
again not necessary if you use this on a periodic basis but then again just to be doubly sure if you want to clean your throttle body from the outside all you need to do is remove your air filter and squat this in from the air box squat this in from the air box into your throttle body and it takes care of the throttle body from the inside you do not do not have to remove everything but even if you were to remove your throttle body if you were to remove your fuel pump and components like that i'm not so sure about this being safe for the fuel pump but with this i have cleaned my oxygen sensor with this i've cleaned my throttle bodies with this i can clean so many components for that matter and it's it's uh, it's another fantastic product if you understand what uh, uh, you know choke and carb cleaning actually means um, so yes another product that i have with me i've been using for the last 15 years 10 10 plus years solid it's what i use to wash my motorcycle with of course you get it in all sorts of sorts of brands my motorcycle and car both i wash with this uh, just a concentrated shampoo uh, very concentrated so all you need uh, need is this much to wa wash your entire motorcycle with just half the cap Okay, so this is going to be interesting. What you see here is the model 15W50 semi-synthetic, techno synthes. Mm, don't know what language that is. I believe it's German. Anyway, so this is, this is an oil that I've been using for the last 15 years. 1-5. Easy 1-5 years. I used to sell these oils and, uh, and so uh, developed a, a liking for it and started using it on a regular basis. This I've used on all sorts of machines, racing machines, road machines, and you know, this does a good, good job. But uh, for the first time uh, in um, the last 10 years or so, I'm going to try another oil from another manufacturer. There's a video coming up on that. We'll talk about it when we get there. But this is an oil that I would recommend to any Himalayan owner, problem-free, issue-free, trouble-free riding for as long as this lasts. The only downside to this oil is that it gets um, burnt a little too quickly. Uh, evaporation rate is also not very good. It uh, evaporates a little quicker than certain other oils and also gets burnt if you were to do high RPM runs, continuous high RPM runs. You will see it, You will see that you know the oil turns black about, at about um, 2,500 to 3,500 kilometers. That's the lifespan of this oil on your motorcycle. Do change. But until then, no problems. Slick gear shifts. Fantastic oil. Uh, uh, an all-rounder. Without a doubt, an all-rounder. JB Weld. Uh, I've used them. I've used these fellows in the past. Not on the Himalayan. Nowhere on the Himalayan. Lucky me. I haven't broken an engine casing. I haven't broken my uh, oil drain bolts, nuts. So yes, but they work wonders. All you need to do is just mix the compound and apply it immediately this is more like a quick curing compound you do not have to leave it overnight and all that set time is five minutes works fantastically well i've used this on my yamaha r15 on my charisma and motorcycles like that where i had problems with um, uh, engine uh, bolts stripped threads and all that so yeah this also helps form threads to some extent it will uh, if you're looking at eight to ten newton meters of course you uh, uh, you can use this to form threads but all that for some other day. Someday when I actually run into a problem, I'll make a video about uh, on this, how this works. Automotive gasket maker and a Bond 660 Max automotive gasket maker. This is one thing that I've used. Mm, silicone gasket. This is not exactly the, uh, the other kind of gasket. This is the gray gasket. This is the transparent gasket maker. We used many a times for a lot of uh, you know, mating surfaces. Uh, again, there'll be a day when I'll uh, definitely need to use this. On that day, I'll make a video on this. But this is what I carry with me. Of course, there were other gasket makers that I had, but I ran uh, out of them. I mean, there's no stock of them now with me. I'm not using them anymore. So, uh, matte black paint, uh, whatever brand, anything uh, upwards of... Uh, uh, I mean, I don't really want to give you a figure. Any good brand will take care of paint and uh, you know minor touch-ups for you not a big uh, polished guy but this at times helps for the windshield and the speedometers i use them not on the speedometers only on the windshields this is to just apply a small thin coat on the windshield so that it retains its shine what else do i have i have kerosene with me to wash my engine with I have some dielectric grease with me. This I have uh, this is a dedicated dielectric grease. Very, very, very expensive that I got. Um, and I still have stock of it. This is more like the battery terminal grease. But of course, this is also as good as di dielectric grease. And this is <laughs> a tissue roll. What else? Well, that's about it. All these things. 
that I have on the table uh, are the things that you also need to get, uh, sparing some, like the cane and air filter oil. You don't need it if you don't have a uh, oiled uh, cotton gauze air filter. But yeah, predominantly three quarters of it uh, is regular stuff you have to use on a regular basis. One quarter of it is just once in a while stuff. So of course you can borrow it if your friends have it from them, if your friends have them. But yeah, that's the whole of it. Quick, easy video on maintenance. And this, and this, of course, in another video that I'll make on all the tools that I have, all my tools. Um, so yep, that was the whole of it. If this helped, it helped. <laughs> um, I'll see you guys on another video. Uh, until then, this is Ben signing out for now. Ciao.